There was a young man, a few years ago, he came into JCC. Not very young, but in his, roughly in his late 30s, maybe in his early 40s, I would guess. He came in here, I can remember Pastor Jonathan was in that prayer pray meeting that Wednesday evening. He came for the very first time and, he, and his request was, he is trusting God for a job. Pastor Jonathan called me, we prayed for him in front. This guy was faithful. He was dedicated, you could see it because every Wednesday when we would lock, when we would open up, he would be here ready, excited. Because I believe he made a commitment because he was into, you know, a bit of bad things. He, he was committed. You could see it because he was here I think for, for about two months straight, he was faithful in church. And you know what? God accepted and God heard his prayer and he answered his prayer. Because the Bible says, you know, if you ask, you must keep on asking. And if you knock, keep on knocking. If you seek, keep on seeking. And God will answer. Because we serve a, a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Amen. Amen. Can I say that again? It sounds so yeah. powerful. We serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Amen. Amen. God answered this prayer. He came in. I visited him. I visited his house a couple of times because it was like follow-ups. And in no family, God answered this prayer and he started the job, and that was history. One day, I, I, just, I just took a turn, you know, I'm just driving around and I got him not far from his house and he said, hey brother, how are you doing? He said, hey brother, I'm busy man, I'm working. I said, yeah, it's fine. I said, no, bless the Lord, we prayed for it and God has answered your prayer. But you must, you know, when you've got time, come in, come to the house of the Lord, don't be so scared. And he was a goner from there on. Why, why do I say this this morning? A lot of people, and I want to, let me just make this statement. I kept it for the very last, but let me start off with this powerful statement by John C. Maxwell. He says, the highest reward for your work is not what you get for it, but what you become by it. I wanted to keep that statement for the very last. But I just felt compelled this morning to do that. You know, God can change the program. You know, when the widow lost her son? You know, most at the, at the funerals, you know, you, you've got the order of how you, this is the minister, this is the poor bearers, this is the soloist, this is the obituary, this is, everything is sorted out. But when Jesus came, he just changed the whole program and he just said, stand up, young man. That is so a powerful statement. The highest reward for your work is not what you get for it. How many people serve God for what they can get from it? What they can get from God? It's like this one pastor, um, he said, um, you just get, give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy and I'll take all your give me. <laughs> a lot of people come to the house of the Lord, Father, I need a job, I need a house, my son is in a case, my daughter's on drugs and I want it and I want it now. Klar. I want to I wanna continue with my with the sermon I preached two weeks ago. <coughs> faithfulness leads to fruitfulness. I'm going to call it part two. Our faithfulness leads to fruitfulness. People serve God on conditions. Mm -hmm. What they can gain. <coughs> Maybe what they can get from the church. But they have no relationship with God. They, they, they just come whenever they want to. They do whatever they want to. Because you know what? They didn't, they, they, they're not really connected to God. This young man, he was dedicated. 
and his connection was proper and it was pure and God honored him for that. Yeah. You know, God honor your, your dedication and your faithfulness. Amen. And I've seen how many of my friends have I seen God, you know, take them from drugs. God take them from gangsterism. And God take them out of the mighty clay and has, you know, plant them on the solid rock. And after a while, you know, they become complacent. It's, it's, it's just a come and go. And we know we use that phrase. A lot of Christians use. God will understand. In Afrikaans, it's so nice. The Heere sal verstaan. The Heere verstaan. No, my friend. No family. God don't understand. You know why? God, he cleansed 10 lepers. Jesus. Ten lepers he cleansed. Yes. But the Bible says, on the way when one he realized he was healed from his leprosy, hey. he turned around. Yes. Turn around. That is conversion. Yes. If, you, if you walk in sin, you turn around yes. 360 and walk the other way. Yes. The Bible says he turned, he came back to Jesus. And you know what Jesus said? He asked, where are the other nine? In other words, this gives me the reason to say that God wants us and he expects us to come back to him. But now I receive my speedboat, I receive a race, I receive. So I think, ah, I can't, I, I earn too much money now, I can't give this. God has given me a race. And I know if I'm going to come to church, Pastor Brandon say, he's going to talk about giving. <laughs> But it's not Pastor Brandon that wants you to give. It's public. It's in the Bible. Yes. The Bible tells that pe people gave out of their, their need. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, a scripture in Ecclesiastes uh, 11 verse 1. It says, cast your bread under water. Yeah. And after many days you will receive it. But you know what? I always mention this because a lot of people, they don't sow the bread. They sow the crumbs. You get bread and you get crumbs. Yes, yes family. Have you seen crumbs? It, sounds, it looks so like you don't understand. What is crumbs? Crumbs is bread. Crumbs is crumbs. I'm not here for, for finances this morning, family. But people serve God only on what they can gain and what they can get from God. The highest reward for your work is not what you get for it, but what you become by it. God knew that when he, if, if he should have gave Joseph that position of being second in charge yeah. in Egypt, yeah. or even where he was at that time, he would have never lasted. You know why? Because he wasn't ready for it. Yes. He wasn't ready for it. God's not going to give me that million now because, it, you know, if you're going to give me that million, I'm going to buy the fortune. Yeah. <laughs> and the house. <laughs> And maybe a guitar for the church, if, if you know, by the way. Because the church is always the last on our mind. God is always, when, yes. Let us go to the, to the book of John. <coughs> Chapter 15. I'm honored again, once again, to, minister, to be ministering the word of God unto you guys. I'm so privileged this morning and the leadership that entrusted me to, to minister. And I believe you will be blessed this morning. Um, I want to, I'm going to highlight just three points from, from this portion of scripture. John chapter 15, we're going to pick up our reading from verse 4 to 6. I'm reading from a Thompson Chain reference Bible. So it might differ from the one that you have. The Bible says in John 15 verse 4, it says, And this is the words of Jesus. Everything that is written in red is what Jesus said. It comes straight from the mouth of Jesus. So this is the words of Jesus. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. In this verse alone that I've read, the word remains appears four times. 
So it wants to make a statement. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a message that, you know, Jesus wants us to get. We have to remain in Him. Some Bibles may read, abide in Him. If this is, if this is us, and the Bible is Jesus, that is remaining in Him. People won't see us anymore. We'll see Jesus in us. My first point this morning is connecting. Remain in me. Stay connected to me. Abide in me. The vision of JCC, the vision of our church, is connecting to God and connecting to people. You cannot get connected with people if you are not connected to God. There's an old song that says, if we don't have the Spirit of God, yeah. how can we reach a soul? So in other words, we need to have a connection with our source. There's the word source again. We need to have, we need to be empowered before we can go out and reach people. We need to be connected to Jesus. I was just, you know, something just dropped in me, you know, of, uh, last week when I was studying and is that you... I've never seen a fruit tree that has invisible fruit. It's just something that came to me. I thought, you know, this is just something silly, but I've never come to a, you know, a, 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 you know, an orange tree or a avocado tree or, you know, in Durban you'll get a lot of banana trees. I've never come to a tree when you, 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 you I say there's a banana tree. I ask, where is the bananas? Or where is the tree? I can't see the tree. You don't get the tree like that. I don't know. So when people say, you know what, you'll see me in the spirit, I don't know. How can you see someone, in the, a person in the spirit? Because even when Jesus was on earth, he was in flesh. Yes, he was, he was spirit. But he was also 100% man. And Jesus is saying this morning, stay connected to me. What is connection? What is being connected? It is a relationship which a person or a thing is linked or associated with something else. Now in our lifetime, we all will be or will get connected to, to some people somewhere along the line. Whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be colleagues or strangers we meet along the road. But we will connect with people because we are not islands. <laughs> We are not just on, I've got in my, I'm in my corner and you in your corner. We will have to, you know, connect at some point or the other. What is so strange is that a lot of people are more interested and in connect more with their jobs, with family, than with God. We value our, our jobs more than we would value our connection with God. And God is the one that is keeping us alive. He's the one that is, gave us the job. He's the one that gave us what we have. So we cannot boast in anything. And Jesus is, is asking us to remain in Him, to stay connected to Him. This young man, when he came in, he became, he was connected. And if you are connected, the Bible says, if you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. Because whatever the grape need, whatever the fruit need to grow, you need to draw your, your nutrients, you need to draw your, whatever you need, you need to draw it from your source, so that you can grow. I cannot grow if I don't eat. I will die. So in other words, for us as Christians to grow and to mature in Christ, we need to eat. Yeah. Nowadays, 
The internet, if you cannot connect to the internet, it's a big problem. And it shows that circle buffering because it means there's no connection. You cannot use the internet if you're not connected to the source. God wants us to remain in His Son, Jesus Christ. Because everything that we need is locked up in Jesus Christ. He is the main man. In 1 Timothy 2, Paul, when he writes to Timothy, he says, There is one God and there is one man between God and man. And it is the mediator, it is Jesus Christ. He is the man in the middle. He intercedes on our behalf. We don't need anyone else to take us to God. There is our key, there is our door, there is our everything. I am the way, the truth and the life. In John 14, says. And our connection is very key. And nowadays you get people who want to be you know, connected to the elite people and to people in parliament, the who you know. And, and, and it is true, <laughs> you know. Sometimes when you get to the people that are, that are in that position, you get some luck. And we value that connection more because it is, you know, high-ranked people. But we forget about there's a person in the house. Yes. We don't need to know anyone else but him. Hey. <laughs> I say we don't need... I don't need to be in connection with Tyler Perry. Yes. No. I don't need, need to be in connection with any government official. Yeah. I just need to be connected to Jesus Christ. I need to be connected to God. God will make a way. He will open a door. He will give you my healing. He will give you deliverance. Everything is locked up in the vine. He said, remain in me four times. Yes. Remain in me. Stay in me. Stay connected. Just remain here. Just abide here. It is difficult because it's going to cost you to be patient. It's going to cost you now to be faithful. It's going to cost you to persevere. It's going to cost you now to be dedicated to the cause. Sometimes it may take a little while. For Joseph, it took almost 30 years to get into that position. A lot of people don't understand when Joseph was thrown into that pit. He was not even 20 years old. He was, he was sold as a slave. But God promised him through, through his dreams. I saw how they bow before you. It was a dream. But look how much time it took for him to get to that. Because we don't want to. And I think Pastor Steve, he ministered about it. We don't want to follow the process. There is a process God works on and he's not going to change from it. We're going to have to follow it. Even Daniel, as spiritual as Daniel was. The Bible says there was an excellent spirit in Daniel. But he was thrown into the lion's den. But you know what? Even in the lion's den, you've got the lion of the tribe of Judah that is with you. Even though they throw you in the lion's den. You've got the big lion with you. That lion look like smarties compared to this lion I'm talking about. Remain in me. Stay connected to me. Let us turn to the book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 16. So how do we stay connected to Him? Can, we, can, can, can the media just put up that verse, Hebrews 4, verse 6, 16? Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence. The eldest brother of the prodigal son. Why don't I get anything? I've never received a party. But the father said, whatever is yours, yours. Look at Desmond, if you want a house, you can pick one. 
It's there. But I must remain in Him. I must be faithful to Him. Sometimes we are more faithful to our bosses and to our employers and to our husbands and our wives and to our children and to the teachers than to God. Remain in me. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 This is how we can stay connected to God. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 It's very quiet in here this morning. Oh, that's very nice, short and sweet. Pray continually. Pray without ceasing. Don't stop to pray. We only stop praying when we get the job. Thank you, Lord, for the job. You won't see me again in prayer meeting. God answered my prayer. Amen. I'll see you again. Christmas. Pray continually. You know, family, I don't want to I don't want to give my testimony of what God has done for me in this church. It's too much. We're gonna have tears this morning if I'm gonna start. Because I was sitting right at the back where Abigail was seated. And when myself and Janine wrote out our information cards and there's a, a, a question they ask you at the bottom, do you want to become part of JCC? We, we said, no. But faithfulness, but perseverance, but, but dedication, serving God, not a man. Yes, we do honor our pastors here, but we don't worship them. Amen. We honor the men of God. We honor our leaders. But we do not worship him. We cannot worship a man. Because God said, love me and only me. No one else. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come through the Father. But through me. My second point this morning is communicating. Let us read John 15, verse 7. If you remain in me, there's the word remain again. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, remain again. Ask. Ask is now we're talking. First, we needed just to remain. We need to be connected. But now Jesus also requests of us to ask. Now, now it becomes more intimate now. Yes, we've seen each other. Yes, we've got connected, but now we have to talk. We have to, you know, get things going. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Anything. I need a new pair of shoes. It's on its way. Just go to Jordan. Tell them you need a size 7. Brown, whatever, how many you want. It's paid in full. Please don't go do that tomorrow, family. I didn't say you must. Please, ladies, leave for and, and the other stores. I didn't say you must go. <laughs> I'm making an example. If you have the faith, you can go. <laughs> if you have the faith, you can go. But ask. Communicate. Ask God. Pray. How would it be if if we in a church but we never talk? We just come in and say, What is that? Pastor Brandon would love for a week if I should come in. Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of Theodore Roosevelt, made a statement. She says, some people make things happen. Some watch things happen. While others don't have a clue what's happening. Ask. 
Ask. Ask me. Ask. What do you want? The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight yourself in me, and I will give you the desires of my heart. We want the, des- we want the desires of our heart, but the Bible says, Delight yourself in me. In me. In me. Not outside of me. Delight yourself in me. Then I will give you the desires of my heart. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Does God talk about money here? No. Does God talk about anything that you... You, you know you must do funny things? No. Ask. Just ask of me. What is communication? Communication is the imparting, exchanging, or transferring of information by speaking, writing, or using some other form of medium. They say the best form of communication is verbal communication. How silly would it be if I would, if people can think, you know what? What is the number for God? I want to call him. No. We have to use our mouth. We have to talk to God. We have to ask him. We have to speak to him. We have to have fellowship with him. We we, we must have communion with God. We have to communicate to God. I'm not well. How are you doing? How's things? This, this, this. We can speak to God in any which way. When Hannah, she asked God for a baby, the priest thought that she was crazy, she was drunk. But that was her form of communication. But God understand what she said. He knows your heart. Even if you're sitting here and, and you're just saying, and say, you know what, a lot of people, can't the people see what I'm going through? I want to encourage you, my friend, whoever you are, God sees you. God knows your heart. You may talk to yourself and you may just speak in your mind and people might think you are crazy because that's what Eli told also. But God understand. There's a song that says tears are a language only God understand. Only God understand. Let's turn to the book of Matthew chapter 6. I want to just prove to, to your family this morning how important prayer is. How important communication is to God. Matthew 6. Let's, let's, let's pick it up from, from, from verse 5. Matthew 6. It says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. It also gives us how to pray. So it's not just you, you pray, but there's also a form of how you can pray. The Bible says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in the secret will reward you. There again, ask whatever you will and it will be given to you. The father that sees in secret, he will reward you. In other words, you will benefit from asking. Verse 9 says, how should we pray? This is how Jesus you know, taught his disciples. I mean, family, if prayer was not important, then Jesus wouldn't have given them this example of how to pray. Yeah. And, I, and I think this is one of the, the, the most powerful prayer that we can get in the world. All around the world, people are praying this prayer. And they've got it right now that I think in, in, in South Africa, I don't know, Pastor Steve who's, who's in the education, um, because we used to say this prayer before our day starts. Yeah. I don't know if they still do it. Yeah. Because I, I heard that they want to, you know, get it out of the way. 
Then this is how you should pray, verse 10. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This is how important prayer was to Jesus. And I don't want, there is hundreds of scriptures that goes and talks about prayer. And Jesus is a perfect example. Because the Bible says, after he have done miracles, signs or wonders, he would just exclude himself from the disciples. And he would go one side and would pray. Because he understand, as much as we need to remain in him, he need to remain to connected to the source at all times. In other words, if he, like the woman with the issue of blood, when she touched him, she, she draw from the source power, healing power that healed her. So for other words, for Jesus to stay empowered, he also needed to pray. Because why did he need to pray? Because he needed to be in, connected, in connection with his father. Yeah. He needed to be on par with what's going to happen. Because he's connected to the source. Yes. He prayed. Yes. Even, before, even before the crucifixion in the garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says he was intervailing. And the Bible says his prayer was so intense. That his sweat turned into blood. Drops of blood. Interceding for me and you. And he's still interceding for me and you. First John 5, verse 14 and 15. First John 5, verse 14 and 15. Can we just pick that up? Are we still here, family? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this, is this first zone 5 verse 14 and 15? Can we just go to verse 15? I think we had the scripture. Yes. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. And we know. We have to ask God. We have to speak to Him. Young people, we have to speak to God. Family, we have to speak to God. We speak to a lot of people. But God wants us to speak to Him. I want to pick up my final point this morning. We must be connected to God. We must communicate with God. And we must be Compassionate. Number three. Connecting, communicating, and compassionate. John 15 verse 12 to 14. My command is thus. Love each other. As I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known. To you. I want to make this powerful statement. Until you have real compassion, you cannot recognize love. How many people are sitting at home? How many people are struggling, Christians? And sometimes we can see our brother or our sister or are struggling. And we would just turn a blind eye. But God is calling us to be compassionate. He's calling us to love one another. Because He demonstrated His love for us while we were yet sinners. Christ demonstrated His love. He showed us, in fact the Bible says, whenever He saw the multitudes, 
He was moved with compassion. Why? Because God is love. God is love. You want to know what love is? I don't want to know that song. It sounds so. You know what I know what love is, that song? God is love. Jesus showed his love for us when he died for us, when we were still busy with our wrongdoings. So God expects of us to do the same for the next person. And Jesus is never condemning, but he's also never compromising. He will never condemn us. So it is important for us that we should not condemn one another. We should not condemn when we see someone. We should not condemn. Keeping in mind, we should also not compromise because by God, He loves the sinner, but sin he hates. I cannot go with the flow and, and just join in any party like I want to or just do what I want to do and just expect God to just give me grace, grace, grace all the time. As Romans says, well, I abound in grace. Huh? Stay in sin so that the grace can abound. God calls us to be compassionate with one another. Love God first. If we cannot have that love for God, we will never have that love for one another. How sad is it to see that we confess sometimes, you know, um, and there's an old song that we used to sing that time um, in church. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of my King. But is that really what we see in other? You know that song? I can see in you the glory of my King. But is that when we look at one another, is that really what we see in one another? Connecting to God, communicating, and be compassionate. Yes. Have a passion for what you do. Yes. Pastor Brandon, don't need to tell me. Is you must you must open the church this time. You must do that. I know I, I need to do it. You know why? I love God. I love God. No one need to tell me when to pray. Because I know as a Christian, I need to pray. Yes. No one need to tell me when does the church start. I know because I make it my, you know, my, my, my interest in what is the times of the church. When is this happening? How do I go about this? I must read my Bible. I must study the word of God. I must be compassionate and reach out to the lost. Connecting to God. Connecting to people. In all these three points, my friend, all these three points, our love, our, 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 our life is based on these three points. And if we're faithful, we will be fruitful. The highest reward for your work is not what you get for it. I'm going to serve God because I know I'm going to, this is what I'm going to get. No family. It mustn't be that. Our mindset mustn't be, I'm going to work because I want this. I'm going to do this because I need this. I must, I must say this because I want this. No. The highest reward for your work is not what you get for it, but what you become by it. When Joseph received that post, God rewarded him for his faithfulness. Never in the scriptures in Genesis when we read that Joseph, he was outside of the will of God. Never once can we read that Joseph was unfaithful. Never once can we read that Daniel was unfaithful. In fact, the people were looking for a way to get Daniel. You know where they got him? He was on his knees. Isn't it good when people can get you? Where is Jason? Ah, he's in church, man. Where is this guy? Where is this lady? No, she's praying. They went to go do a home visit. Busy with the work of the Lord. Faithful. Faithful to God. 
faithful to the vine. Stay connected to the source. Look family, it is not about JCC. Yes, we are Jesus Connection Church. <laughs> we're talking about God. We're talking about Jesus Christ who died for us. There's no bigger example than Jesus Christ. We just need to look. We just need to look to Him. Because that is our answer for all our problems. But the one thing that we need Sometimes we don't want to fellowship with it. We don't want to make time for Jesus Christ. But I want to encourage you this morning, family. We have to be faithful to God. God will reward you for your faithfulness. Remain in Him. As He remains in us. Ask Him whatever we want, communicating with Him. And be Passionate and be compassionate towards one another and to God.